dementia, and Alzheimer's. What do you do if you're struggling with it with a family member? It's usually where this is coming from. Or you're scared, you've watched a family member go through it. My grandmother had this condition and I watched at the end of her life completely lose the ability to know who I was. So my grandmother left this planet and I could go visit her for the last five years of her life, no clue who I was. Barely an idea of who my mom was and near the end, not even that. Devastating condition. Why does the brain break down so much like that? Why do we lose all that memory and the ability to learn? Well, this condition is now being referred to in some cases as type three diabetes because the brain is of course processing insulin. It is using sugar. This is how you can sit at a desk all day long, not move, work eight hours and come home exhausted. Your brain uses up to 60% of the sugar stores, carbohydrates in your body. It's constantly needing energy. When the brain loses its ability to use insulin, which is the shuttle for that energy, then that's when it starts to lead to a breakdown. That's insulin usage is essential for learning. It is essential for memory. Type three diabetes now being referred to as dementia and Alzheimer's. So devastating condition. What do you do? Five, five major areas to be focused on. Maybe one bonus, five major areas to be focused on. If you want to prevent, have more of an active or anti-dementia and uh, brain deterioration lifestyle, or if you have a family member in the middle of it. Number one, the unsexy one, lifestyle. Lifestyle is crazy, crazy important, especially how you're eating and how you're moving. If dementia and Alzheimer's is now known as type three diabetes, then what do we get to, need to get under control? The usage of energy in our body. Sugar is incredibly toxic for our system when done in the process form and when done too much. So we wanna make sure that we are eliminating as much as we can of that in our diet. We are taking periods of time where we are not consuming at all any form of food, fasting. Both of those are incredibly insulin friendly. So we want an insulin friendly lifestyle is number one, insulin friendly lifestyle. The second component of an insulin friendly lifestyle is movement. When you can increase vascular blood flow to the brain, we are now optimizing the nutrients, we're now optimizing the oxygen, we are now optimizing how the body is using its energy and getting rid of its waste. It's incredibly important. So number two is increase vascular blood flow. Nothing better than exercise and movement. 10 minute workouts that we teach during our challenges, cardio, walking, moving, getting that body going, or rebounding. Rebound's a very useful and uh, easy way to get lots of blood flow specifically to the brain. What rebounding does is uh, jumping on a mini trampoline. It is going to stimulate the spinal fluid flow around the spinal cord and around your brain. The thing that gives your brain a bath every single day, that spinal fluid, it's all around your brain, cannot move on its own. It does not have its own pump. It's not like blood, there's no heart driving it. That pond water cannot be stagnant. We need to get it moving like a river and rebounding optimizes that to push the cranial sacral pump, the pump between the base of your skull and the top of your bum to move the spinal fluid up and down, to nurture the spinal cord and the brain. Movement is incredibly important of any type, but especially throwing in rebounding, number two. So we have an insulin friendly lifestyle. We have increased vascular blood flow. Number three, we've got to address and remove inflammation. Inflammation and the buildup of it makes the condition of Alzheimer's and dementia worse, specifically when it builds up and we have placking and degeneration happening in the brain. So a very anti-inflammatory lifestyle is a very good approach. No two better than omega and turmeric to get into your body. In fact, in studies, omegas have been shown to reduce cognitive impairment. So putting fish, flax, chia in your diet is a good idea. You can also get it in the supplement form. Uh, the one that I make is a high concentration and the two of those are combined, omega and turmeric, so you can get that one, two punch all together into one pill. That would be one of the best brain health supplements that I would recommend. Number four, healthy fats versus bad fats. You've got to avoid congestive toxic fats. Your brain is made up 
uh, primarily of fat. The predominant ingredient in the brain is fat. If you give it garbage fat, what is it to make new cells from? Let alone it congests cells, blocks them, backs them up, inflames them, creates these problems. So healthy fats and knowing the difference between them and unhealthy fats is extremely important. One of the best ones research shows for the brain is coconut oil. Coconut oil is very high in caprylic acid. Caprylic acid can be broken down into ketones, which is like brain food. Your brain loves those ketones. Now, I don't think I would just supplement with straight up ketones. We wanna eat a food that the body can utilize properly. So coconut oil in research has been shown to be very brain friendly because of that high caprylic acid. I also like it to boost the immune system as well. So those struggling in the middle of a condition like this, we're wanting to prevent it one to two tablespoons of coconut oil a day. I put one of mine straight up in my coffee, a little brain fuel in the morning. Avoid the unhealthy fats, soybean oil, vegetable oil, canola oil. These are rancid fats. They congest your body, not a good idea. And then finally, number five, sleep. Sleep, sleep decreases dementia risk, period. We've got to rest. We are overusing the brain. Imagine you just, it's like a car. You only get so many miles. You only get so many bumps. You only get so many ins and outs. You only get so many starts of the engine. There's just, everything has an expiration date. So does your brain. So the longer you leave it on, especially with mindless activity or run it down with too much stress or deprive it of two hours of sleep every single day for a period of a month or a year or 10 years or 20 years, you are asking to deplete the engine, and this is the most important one we have. So we've gotta get proper sleep. If you struggle with it, aids can help, such as melatonin or lemon balm. Some of these things can help to calm the system down and allow you to sleep better. Our Calm Supplement was meant just for that. You can take it right before bed to help you to get to sleep into a deeper sleep faster if you need help with it. If you're waking up in the middle of the night and it's cutting your sleep short, try our De-Stress Supplement to keep you asleep so that cortisol spiking too early, but sleep is incredibly important. How to get an Alzheimer and dementia friendly lifestyle moving in the right direction.